Welcome to the Vine Podcast. This is Warren, and we are right at the beginning of a new school year. And so we know some schools have already started back. Others are enjoying a final day of of break and holiday today on Monday, at least when we're releasing this podcast before starting back tomorrow. And so we know school is on a lot of hearts and minds and is a a big conversation in a lot of families and uh, on a lot of news that you may hear and all of that. And so we thought we would take some time today just to talk about this school year and some of the challenges that it may bring, some of the unique aspects of it, and maybe even some of the opportunities uh, that may arise from it. And so joining me for, for this conversation today is once again, Jason Martin. Hello, Jason. How are you? Hey, Warren. Uh, doing pretty well. It's been a bit of a rainy week, and so that's kind of nice to have the rain go- it's raining right now outside my window and, and that's kind of cool uh and yeah as far as school goes i you know i teach at umhb and we've been back for now four weeks or maybe three we started on the 13th so so y'all are fully back in the swing of things oh yes we're we're about uh i think we're like a quarter of the way through our semester 25% of the way through the semester, oh, wow. which is very unreal, but that's the way it is. Yeah. Yeah, but, but we're, we're, we're doing well. Good. And so we wanted to have kind of a, a variety of voices on today with us to, to help us think through and talk through this topic from sort of a variety of different standpoints. And so as Jason said, he's going to kind of give us the perspective of a, a college professor from, from the, the view of, of a college campus. We also have Emily Payne. Hello, Emily. How are you? Good. I'm doing well. It's Friday. It's every educator's favorite night of the week. So it's good. <laughs> is that still the case when you're looking forward to the first week of the year? Is it still? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's still. Maybe even more so. But, you know, it's exciting. Like the final, the final calm before yes. the storm, yes. maybe? That's good. And so you're, you, uh, Emily works with the, the Belton School District. What is your exact title? Remind so me. I'm what's called an instructional coach. Instructional um, coach. And the, we every school has them, and I am one of them for an elementary campus. So basically my job entails um, very similar to what you would think a coach would do on a team. So if you think of the teachers as being the team, and I help coach them with um, different strategies and needs that they have, but also uh, helping with classroom management or – uh, bridging kind of the gap between teachers and other district administrators and being an advocate for both the teachers, but also passing down curriculum information and um, different types of pedagogy we want them to do and just encouraging teachers in their classrooms and kind of in any other way that they need. So it's just kind of the support system of the school for the teachers. Yeah, that's great. Very cool. And certainly, um, I know your job, and we'll get into this a little bit in our conversation, but your job probably has looked very different this mm-hmm. summer already and <laughs> will continue to be to be an interesting challenge yeah. going forward. Yeah, that's true. Uh, um, at least as you thought through strategies beforehand, you knew what the classroom experience looked like. Now you're thinking of strategies for something that you don't yes. even know fully totally what different. it looks like. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's got to be exciting. Um, so, so Emily is here to kind of give that perspective, and then we also have... Aiden Martin, Jason's son. Hi, Aiden. How are you? Hi, I'm good. I'm a student. And, yeah. That's right. Aiden is giving <laughs> us the student perspective. Not only a student, but this is your senior year, right? Yes. So, so that must be, you know, use, senior year, I think of it's kind of full of all this kind of pageantry, right? Like celebrations and dinners and trips and all the kind of final things you get to do certain things. And, and now this is your senior year. So that's gotta be strange. Yeah. Uh, I remember at the end of last year, the last year seniors were upset about, you know, graduation and prom. And it was kind of like a funny thing. Cause it, you know, it's, it's not that big of a deal, I guess, in the, in the run of high school, but then you think about it and it's like, Oh, now we don't get a senior year. So it's kind of coming back at us, you know, <laughs> that's right. When you thought this would all be over by the time you started your senior year, it didn't right. seem like that big of a deal, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's right. And here we are. Right. So, all right. Well, thank you all for, for spending time with us uh, to think through some of this and, 
Um, I'm curious to hear how, how each of you were kind of processing this and handling this and thinking about this all from, from your unique perspectives. And so let's just kind of start, um, you know, I think we, we've been hearing a lot about school and I think we all kind of know that there are, are unique challenges and um, maybe difficulties that, that would make this, this school year certainly uh, different and, and more difficult in many ways. But I just want to start there. So like I said, I think some of those are obvious just with, you know, even thinking in, in kind of a school setting where you have some students in person and some online and just the challenges that come with that. But I want to just start with some of the challenges that this school year will bring. And so maybe, Emily, if you have thoughts there and, and can kind of kick us off on that, since that's a sort of up, up your alley for what you've been dealing with and thinking through, I know. And so maybe what are some of the challenges and are there some that, that you think may not be obvious to, to those of us who aren't involved in those conversations um, on a day-to-day -day basis as you're thinking through this school year? Yeah, sure. So it has definitely been the most challenging school year um, ever. I think, it, you know, you always think about your first year teaching is really super challenging, but in a way this is everyone's first year teaching again and navigating this whole new way of our education system. Um, so there's a lot of just inherent challenges because you're trying to both educate for at least for Belton is starting the school year with at home learners and face to face learners, which are our kids that are coming to school. So of course that brings in the whole challenges of technology and what that's going to look like in a school system, which for, for many, many kids and campuses, that means providing like the physical technology that a student would need to learn at home. So think, you know, everybody, even in the nation, you know, we're making these big purchases and orders for Chromebooks or iPads and having to get that to everyone is, you know, its own challenge. It would be hard enough to have to do that for one campus or one district. But when you think that this is happening nationwide, you know, it gets really backed up. Um, mm. And so then that technology has to be, you know, barcoded and scanned and signed, you know, parents have to sign waivers for them and, uh, it all has to be working and people have to have internet access, which they don't always have in every home. We take, you know, advantage. Ad, we think that that's really a simple thing, but it's really not. It's really complicated and the expenses that come along with that. So just the technology aspect is a huge app is a huge challenge. And um, other things that you don't always think about the space, you know, we've talked about social distancing, but when you think, high schools especially are super crowded hallways are super crowded you've got 35 big bodies in a classroom all the way down to elementary where you know you have fewer kids not not few you have 22 to 25 27 kids sometimes in a classroom so you can't have kids six feet apart there's just no way that that's that's going to work so you have to mitigate that in the best way that you can and you have to create a, a classroom and where kids are spread out as much as you can. And, but also, you know, you think classrooms, but do you think about the cafeteria? What does it look like? How do, where do you fit all these kids to eat? And when they don't have masks on, you know, they're, then food is coming, you know, in and out of their mouths and how do you go through a cafeteria line? So creating the space and the logistics and that's been really challenging. Um, also things like building in the time for extra hand washing. And a lot of that's with, you know, on elementary school kids, like you have to make sure it gets done. Um, so we have special times in the day where, you know, they come in from outside, everybody has to wash hands and that takes instructional time, but it's important and you have to do it. I would think one of the frustrating things would be just like even the policing of mask wearing and things like, like will, will in-person students have to wear masks the whole time? They do in Belton. Every student, no matter, no matter what has to have a mask on. And, and you know, for us, that's even at recess. So just the logistics of that. On. Yeah. And one thing, you know, we've tried to really get across to our teachers is, you know, that's that's the most important thing for us. That's the best thing we can do to try to stop the spread from what we know, what our, you know, the health professionals have told us. And so we have, you know, we have curriculum that we've that's been created, created to teach these little ones how to wear their mask, how to keep it on. And mm. we've, you know, built in 
kind of like mass breaks if we know that kids need that where they can se separate and go to a special area and just take some time with their mask you know off to breathe in fresh air um but when you think about you know kids at recess and when it's really hot with their mask on and kids at pe with their mask on and um keeping it on and keeping it over your nose and not sharing it with your friend or you know <laughs> dropping it in the bat on the bathroom floor all of these things like just yes. the mask aspect is super super challenging so or like with our kids they keep turning it like inside yeah. out and wearing it that way and then turning it back like you're defeating the purpose exactly. of, of keeping <laughs> exactly keeping the outside stuff on yep. the outside and then you know yeah. there's it, it, we can only control what's going on at school so we don't know what happens to these masks when they go home or do they even ever get washed you know who right knows, yeah who knows what's happening with these masks and then I, I just envision like you know so many little kids with their runny noses and they cough everywhere and they don't know how to wipe it and it's just going to be like caked on the inside <laughs> of the mask but uh, at least we don't have to see it i guess is the good the silver lining on that so man kids are but, yeah. so disgusting yeah they they're wonderful <laughs> even at they're belton high and, and even gross. at belton high yeah yeah mm -hmm. so we've also uh, and it seems like yeah it, it seems like you know because i feel like you know access to technology and classroom size have been like conversations around public especially public school systems mm -hmm. for several years now and so it, it seems like this has really just man it brings to the forefront like hey we've had some structural issues here for a while that have just kind of worked. I mean, or, or teachers have made do with because of, you know, ingenuity and strategy and determination and things like that. Mm -hmm. And, um, and man, but then you go through something like this and it just really brings, brings those things to the forefront, I would think. And then everyone's trying to solve them, like you said, at the same time, which creates its own logistical issues. Right. Yeah. And it really, you know, you, you know, that there is, uh, you know, issues with equity within school systems and within the same school. Right. And then you look at providing technology and access to technology for students, both, you know, even when you have the option for, you know, your students to be face to face, it's really, at least in Belton, somewhat of a hybrid model, especially with our, with our oldest kids, with our high schoolers, they're only on campus two days out of the week. So they, you know, have to have the ability to be a virtual learner and, you know, some families we learned in the spring, like they have, you know, mom's cell phone and just limited data. And you're trying to have many kids accomplish, you know, virtual learning on somebody's cell phone plan. So, you know, you, you, we just think that people have access to this stuff and they really don't. And so providing that or providing it, you know, especially Belton has a, a large rural community that doesn't have good internet access. And we have to figure out how do we navigate that and how do we prepare for if we have to go back to everyone as an at-home learner you know that several weeks into this we realize okay this isn't the best choice to keep our our community healthy so we're going to go be at home and are we ready for that transition and you know it's that's really challenging because all of that is new for teachers you know when we became teachers and when we all of our you know uh, professional development leading up to this there's been parts of it that are um, tech driven or they enable you know kids to have what they call a flipped classroom where they do a lot of work at home and then they come to school and do different things but uh, never a situation for us locally that's been completely online and so in programs where there has been online education because that has been offered for several years those teachers are online teachers and they're prepared for that we're prepared to be face-to-face -face teachers and everything that we do is is done that way and and even the challenge it presents for a a student not to see a, a teacher's face you know to not that that body language those expressions that happen behind a mask when you miss that that's gonna you know be a whole new set of challenges that that we know is going to exist but we haven't seen it played out yet um yeah so uh, there's just so many unknowns even still and and things that are going to be changing and and fluctuating and that's it that's a huge challenge is that you can't really make too many plans because those plans are going to change right yeah i know we've talked several times just in other venues about just how as adults we just get um 
zapped by Zoom, like, right? Like, it's just exhausting after being on Zoom for a while and to think about, especially young kids having to sit there all day on Zoom. Yeah, that certainly presents its own challenges of how you keep them engaged and yeah. and alert and paying attention and all of that. Man, forget about young kids. I have trouble with that myself. And and right. my my graduate students who are adults have trouble with that too. Oh, sure. Uh, okay, so Aiden, I want to bring you in here for for a minute. So what about you as a student? Students typically don't prepare for, for a school year as much as teachers do. At least I wouldn't think so. Yeah. <laughs> um, sometimes there's some that goes into that. But what are, where are you kind of at heading into the school year? Or what has been challenging for you as you've thought about and, and gotten ready for the school year? Um, well, for Belton High School, we've also we're also we're doing uh, two groups, I guess. So we have you know people who come in on Mondays and Tuesdays and then people who come in on Thursdays and Fridays. Um, and that's new because of the virus. Um, but we also have switched to like block scheduling. So we'll go to like half of our classes one day and half of our classes the other day and we'll just alternate every other day. And so it's kind of like, mm-hmm. it kind of feels like we're just going to a different school now that just does things differently. Uh, but it's just in the same building, I guess, uh, if that makes sense. So a lot of things are changing. Um, yeah. And they were going to change over to block scheduling, I heard, anyways, before all this happened. But it kind of just adds another layer of like people not really knowing what's going on, everything being kind of confusing. Um, and so it's kind of just from what I've heard from people I know, a lot of people are like confused. Um, like just the other day, we had a day where we went in to get like our AP textbooks um, and our parking passes and our Chromebooks. And just that whole thing, we, we, it was at the school. And I remember just being there and thinking like how like crazy and like different everything was. And like, it, it kind of, it just didn't feel like uh, Belton before. Yeah, I guess, you know, so you're doing in-person stuff two days and then do you do online stuff? Three days, two or three days, three days. Yeah, everyone, I think from last I heard Wednesdays, no one goes to school. It's all online. Wednesdays an online only day. Yeah. Yeah. District wide. So no, with the exception of the first week, nobody goes to school on Wednesdays. Interesting. Teachers, nothing. So it's and that's, you know, these this challenge, like to be able to really deep clean the schools as well as it has to be done. Mm. Um, you know, without quadrupling our staff to be able to do that. Right. So that, so the decision that was made for the scenario that we're starting with is that everybody is an at home learner as what they call an asynchronous learner, where you are not having FaceTime with a teacher, you're doing other assignments or catching up on assignments on Wednesdays. But we also, like I said, like how things just keep changing. We just found out a few days ago that that also means that all staff is off campus. So yeah, so it's, it's also a designated kind of planning and meeting day for teachers, which is wonderful, which is a gift, really to be able to spend some extra time um, planning and working together, but that's all going to be from home. So that, you know, imagine like you don't have all of your resources and you don't have a coffee machine or a laminator or, you know, all those things at your house. Um, but we'll make it work. It's just, it's just a challenge. You know, I think that that's some of the stuff that people don't realize is happening, you know, how that's hard. And it's also, you know, that presents its challenges to the communities to think, okay, well now I have this one day of a week right, yeah. where my kid is going to be at home instead of at school and um, how to work, how to work that out. But we figure it out, you know, daycares change their plans and open up spots for, uh, you know, elementary school aged kids and, it's all, it's going to work. Yeah. And hopefully it'll just be temporary. Yeah. I think we're certainly seeing the ripple effects that that's a school system has within the community. Yeah. When it comes to it, I mean, so much of the workforce is affected by, you know, just has being able to count on their kids going to school for a certain, certain portion of the year. Right. And, and now, yeah, that's, that's shifted or at least looks different. Uh, so Aiden, I'm assuming there's no band right now. Is that right? Um, actually, well, not this week is our off week, but for the past couple of weeks, we've been doing band with like heavily masked and diff- distances. So you know, like we we were out on the field um, and we're inside practicing our show music. So it's really it's not the same because they've been splitting up the bands. Like the top two bands go on one day, and then the other two bands go on the other day. 
so we're kind of alternating and we haven't really been together like all the whole m100 i guess but uh there have been a few times where we've been outside all together but yeah uh and band is supposed to start up we have our first practice of the school year this tuesday um but we had summer band before that so interesting yeah so how does how does this, how does that work are you all six feet apart from each other just practicing your instruments yep pretty much yeah we learn learning like our we haven't we're not able to learn drill yet for our marching show um but we can work on like marching basics and uh playing our show music okay cool I was I was assuming that would be difficult to do with everyone blowing an instrument, but <laughs> yeah, they've they've really tried to do their best with that. Um, but I, you know, every time we every time we play, we just pull it down, and we're really far apart from each other, and so we're doing our best, I guess. But you know, still, still, it's still something else that that looks very different and feels very different, basically. Yeah. So what do you think, Aiden, will be? Do you have a thought of what you think will kind of be most challenging as you go into the school year? Um, for myself, I know like, uh, online learning last year was like nowhere near the same. Cause there were teachers who were trying to keep, um, or there are some teachers who saw it as an opportunity to assign a lot more than they usually would since, you know, there's less things to do. So you have more things to do for my class now. Um, and so that's how some teachers took it. Some teachers just like did their best i remember making like a 10 second video for a major grade one time and just thinking this is the life <laughs> how like <laughs> the teacher that was doing it was just like having to do that and so it, it's kind of like a toss-up with the teacher you get on how much work they're actually going to give you on those off times i think it will be a little better now since i feel like they're going to have it uh more structured with the teachers than it was the end of last year but i could still see like you know, it's going to be different. Yeah, I guess, you know. Uh, so Jason, what about so as you said, y'all have had four weeks now on campus. So you've kind of got through that initial push uh, of the beginning of the semester. What what have been the challenges that you've experienced? Maybe maybe uh, especially unexpected ones that have kind of popped up as you've gone along? Well, our university has uh, done what's called the crew flex, which basically means it's a it's a hybrid model. Um, kind of similar to what Belton's doing, but every class that's offered in person is also online, um, it, either synchronously or with an asynchronous option. So like every time I go in to teach class, I fire up the Zoom meeting in my classroom and they've installed these cameras and microphones so that students can be from home if they choose to be. In fact, if your class is a certain size, then you have to divide it up and have half of the students uh, studying for, or you know attending class remotely, and then the other half are allowed to come in person. Um, my my classes, being graduate classes, are are small enough that um, I haven't had to do that. But I have had a few students who elected to um, attend remote from home, and so the biggest change that I personally have had to encounter um well first of all there are certain buildings on campus certain areas that uh faculty and staff have been kind of restricted from uh just so that students can have wider access to it um so like some of the dining halls and stuff like that so i haven't eaten i haven't eaten a meal on campus uh probably since february i think <laughs> um and then setting up you know the zoom in fact it was it's weird i i really this is the first semester where I really wish that I had a teaching assistant who could just manage all the technology aspects of my class. Mm -hmm. And it's not because I don't know how to do it, but trying to do that and teach a course at the same time has been extremely challenging. And I can only imagine, you know, uh, if there are high school teachers or, 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 you know, elementary or public school teachers who are trying to do that, you're managing the technological aspects of it and also your curriculum that you're trying to teach. And uh, it's, it, it's, it's a lot. It's just a lot to manage all at once. You really need a technical assistant to kind of help with those things. And um, so that, that's probably the, the bigger challenges that I've had. I've also seen like little things. So one of my courses I made, uh, I used our learning management system to create to create some really robust online things um but 
I had some like misinformation where like I had the due date printed, you know, as one date on one section and the due date was uh, listed as something different on another section. So just those inconsistencies and trying to keep everything uh, aligned, that's probably been the most challenging. And then of course, um, you know, we have masks mandates and lots of hand sanitizers and cleaning regimens that have to be done in all the classrooms and um that's just annoying uh it's necessary and i get it i'm not like i'm not saying that it's a bad thing but it's annoying to have to follow all follow all of those and um sometimes i do have students that i have to remind hey mask up you know because they'll have it around their chin and be like mask it up and so just stuff like that. That's really been the main adjustments that we've had over the last few weeks. Yeah. Uh, well, I know we could we could do a whole podcast just on the challenges and and, um, and difficulties of the school year, but but I want to we want to try to cover a few other things kind of related to the year. Um, and so I'm curious to know as as you think about kind of the the people that you have been most in contact with to this point, kind of in the preparation for the school year, or in your case, Jason, in the school year, whether that's, you know, um, other teachers and faculty members, parents, maybe uh, for you, Emily, or students, faculty members, um, Jason, or other maybe friends that you have, or, or teachers you've got to interact with so far, Aiden, or maybe there's others that, that kind of come to mind. Um, I'm I'm wondering if you've sensed sort of is there is there kind of a general emotional um kind of response or feeling that people have is do, do you sense kind of a, of a majority of people feeling like fear or anxiety or excitement or trepidation or or is it kind of all over the map or or what are you kind of sensing and feeling from from those that you've been in contact with I think what I've noticed from you know staff members that I work with there's of course, there's excitement because they're getting kids back in the classroom. It's been a long spring break for all of us, and they're just ready. I mean, they they're in that career because they love what they do and they love be, working with the kids and getting to see them. Mm -hmm. um, and they like being able to see that those kids are okay and that they've been okay for this long stretch. Because for a lot of kids, school is their you know their saving grace. It's their time away from maybe a negative home life or you know, right. this is where they get, they know they get fed every time. And so that there's a lot of excitement, I think, just for staff to bring it back. But at the same time, there is, a, there is some anxiety, both that's um, tied into the virus directly. You know, we have staff members who they may um, have some kind of compromised immune system or they're taking care of elderly parents. And they know that once school starts and they begin to see these students, they're not going to be able to see their parents, you know, their own parents for a while. Um, just because of their exposure or possible exposure. Um, we also, you know, are concerned about there's, you know, anxiety about some of our students that we have that may be in that situation. But I think the other side of that is um, because the teachers and just the whole staff in general, the district is so dedicated to meeting our students' needs, the challenges that come up with either, you know, at-home learners or the difference that we have in our regular classrooms. You know, we're we're so used to things being done in cooperative ways and things are very hands-on and you're you know you're you're touching and feeling and looking and exploring in all of these different ways and now we've got to make sure we keep kids separated and we can't share supplies and that just ch that changes a lot you know your small group is really different when you can't have small group you know how to and so there's some anxiety i think about how are we going to meet all of those needs and you know kids are already so diverse and have such different needs um, it's difficult enough to be able to, to handle that in an average year. And so when we have these challenges of all of the changes that we're having to do in our classrooms, I think, I think that that's a lot of what I'm getting a sense of is that is, I don't really sense fear. I don't, that there's a great amount of people who are really concerned that something's going to happen. Um, I think just because we, maybe we've had the time to, to accept that and move on, and there's a lot of things in place to mm -hmm. kind of prevent that. But I think also just because the nature of the job is so constantly busy that we've just have to decide like, we're not going to, we're not going to put a whole lot of energy into that because we can't, you know, if we're just afraid of, of what yeah. might happen. Um, so from, from a 
from other parents, from kids, you know, we've had to do a lot of uh, parent pickup of supplies of the technology the last couple of days. And that's just sort of been a, a mix. You know, we have some parents who, who are saying, you know, they've just found out that their student has to wear a mask and, and they're upset about it. You know, they don't want that to happen. They want, a, you know, right. a traditional school year uh, experience. And I can under, you know, I can understand that. And a lot of parents are upset that that's not going to be the experience, but at the same time, you know, it's going to be a great experience and there's still going to be a lot to learn and your kid's going to be so much more, you know, flexible and resilient, be able to learn in all different ways. And then we have other parents who are like, like, can I just leave them now? Like, can, like, they're just like, open the door, push them out. Like, thank you, Jesus, that school is finally starting. Like, whatever you need, you just let me know. What if they just stay here yes. and don't come home? Like, that will be the safest. Let's create a bubble environment exactly. like the NBA did. They all can just stay long, here. All day, please, please take them. Yeah. I, I am happy and 100% in support of whatever it is you want me to do. Like, my kid needs to be That's back right. in school. Well, I was, I was wondering too, is there almost, and, and so this may be something that, that y'all have kind of thought through from like a curriculum standpoint or something. Is there sort of a lowering of expectations that has to take place in regards to like how much we're going to get accomplished this year? Or uh, have no. you had to rethink any of that? <laughs> in fact, in fact, there's an increase in, I mean, when we say expectations, I mean, we're all taking, uh, I mean, as far as like how much ground you're going to cover and things like yeah, that. Yeah. Well, so here, so here you go. Here's something people don't think about. So we also have to cover the ground from, uh, March 15th mm. to the end of last school year has been embedded into our curriculum documents and our, we call them year to glance. So in our, you know, like in the, the scope and the sequence of what we have to teach, we have to teach the last, you know, nine weeks of last, <laughs> of last semester. Year. Because, because while we, you know, that uh, we did the best we could then and tried to do what we could, but um, because that happened so abruptly, you know, nationwide, it was kind of like, we're just grasping at straws to make the best out of a bad situation. Right. So there was a lot of review that happened and some, but as far as like new learning, we really do get this, the sense. And as far as the elementary level and secondary, it's a little bit different because of how the courses are, are working out. But for elementary, we have to go back and think, what did they not get yeah. in person that we need to go back and cover and make sure that we have, and then move on to all this curriculum. And, you know, in Texas, they've said like the state testing is still happening. The, you know, AP exams are still happening. All of these things, as of now, are still on the calendar. So, so you've actually got more to cover in in less than ideal circumstances yes, to do it. Exactly. Like yes, like cool. figure out how you're going to teach more in less time. Four days, four days for now instead of five. Which hopefully that will that will change and go back. But yeah. um, all right. Yeah. So well, good luck. Yeah, we appreciate your prayers. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. There's. I tell you what. When people talk about teachers being superheroes, like they are. Like. They really are. And, you know, they just go and you tell them they do that. And they're, it's like, okay, we'll figure it out. We'll make it, we'll make it happen. Yeah, that's great. And, and they do. Aiden, Aiden, what about for you? As, as you've kind of talked to your friends and others getting ready for the school year, do you sense kind of are, are your friends, are you ready to get back? Do you have any anxieties? How, how are you feeling? Um, I think people are like ready to actually do something because um, I know like, half the people I know got like a job and then the other half have just been like sitting at home, not really doing anything, kind of waiting for school to start. Um, and so, I don't know. I think some people are relieved that it's coming back just cause it's going to be like, kind of like everything's back to normal to a degree. Um, but then also uh, I know people like liked not doing much, I guess. <laughs> um, and like I got a job this summer and so like and I, I quit that job so that i could do school and i feel like that was the right choice but also it's like you know i don't know it, it's kind of weird because it's kind of like we already transitioned into a different way uh for this year because we've done all these different things school wasn't really a thing we had to worry about for the past couple of months and now it is and so i think it's going to be kind of weird and i think i know a lot of people that are going to think it's weird too yeah certainly an adjustment process getting getting back into it for sure i would think right i, I think a lot of people are going to be surprised how difficult it is to get back into oh, the swing yeah. of things um regardless uh, i mean not even accounting for the fact that it's going to be a very different school year than anyone's ever experienced 
but uh, whether it's the same or different, just getting back into that routine, I think, is going to be a, a very rude awakening for oh, yeah, a lot of I'm people. Sure. You're going to have to get dressed every day. Like, who has time for that? <laughs> no, no. Actually, to start, only two days, right? <laughs> well, I said, we will. I <laughs> they only have to get dressed two days a week. Day, so we, yeah. um, oh, yeah. okay. Um, yeah. What about on campus, Jason? Is there a... Um, there's a general feeling or have you noticed anything? Um, I think there is, uh, I mean, the word that keeps coming to my mind is tired. Not, not just physically tired, but just so tired of, of, uh, of, of having to be cautious and think through implications for things that we previously just took for granted. I think people are just tired of that. I think there is uh, on campus a little bit of uh, fear. I don't know is the right word, but I can't think of a better word. But, but it's in the category of fear because UMHB was one of the first uh, universities in the state of Texas to allow students back on campus. And, uh, and they've been very vigilant about uh, being safe, about sticking to the policies and procedures that, uh, that we all agreed to to begin with. There, we have so many different uh, protocols for, uh, for campus. And, and I think a lot of people are just kind of, well, as the semester goes along, I, I'm feeling a little bit less of this, but th I do get the sense that, that there are a lot of people who are just kind of waiting for a big outbreak to occur or just waiting for something um, unforeseen to come about that just turns everything on its head. Um, you know, we, we were back on campus for the month of July, and now, uh, you know, we've been going with with school for three or four weeks now and so far that hasn't happened and so i think people are getting a little bit more comfortable but still there is a little bit of okay let's just wait to see how well this goes you know our semester is going to be over at thanksgiving and i think a lot of people feel like if we make it to thanksgiving uh you know then then we could feel a lot better about how things went and i think people are just kind of white knuckling it a little bit until then so just making it to thanksgiving will be basically seen as a pretty big win then for the oh that that will be the ultimate win absolutely that's that's the super bowl right there as far as we're concerned yeah what about are is umhb having any fall sports or have those all been nope those... well ncaa uh canceled all fall sports for all division two and three okay yeah, that's been a mess with. I know at the highest level of college football, it's been very disorganized, but but I didn't know how much it was at the lower, at the other levels. That's a podcast for another day. Uh, um, so we are... Maybe a different podcast altogether. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one that I am definitely not going to be a part of. Uh, it would be a fun one, though, to do. Um, okay, but but you're yes, we are a church podcast, and so speaking of church and faith, I do want to spend a few minutes just thinking about um, how has your your faith equipped you to sort of prepare for this moment that we are in, and how do you see your faith kind of carrying you through this school year? And in, any of you can can chime in on that one. Well, I'll I'll just say that I we hear about trials and tribulations that people have had to go through um, throughout the Bible and throughout the history of, uh, of Christianity. And, um, you know, I, I, I just chalk this up to one of those. And especially given the fact that we're not being, you know, we're not, we don't live in a place where we're being oppressed for our faith. We're not living in a place where, uh, or, or at least, in a time in my life where I am, you know, without shelter or without food or clothing, um, I'm not, in, in, you know, persecuted in the way that people have throughout the Bible. And so I, I see this as a trial and a tribulation that we have to endure. Um, but I, I take comfort in knowing that there are people that have come before me who have gone through a lot worse. And the more I learn about, um, the coronavirus, the more I learn about what, what is being required of us, the more I think, yeah, we can do this. And so it's inconvenient. It's um, sometimes a little frustrating, sometimes a little depressing. 
Um, but overall, I feel like in the grand scheme of things, we can make it through this. And I, I get a lot of my comfort from that fact, uh, from my faith and, and from a uh, witness, you know, the cloud, the great cloud of witnesses that have gone before us and for the people who have set examples of how to endure during difficult circumstances. And I think, okay, they showed us how to do this. God has showed us how to do this. Um, you know, God is faithful. Uh, you know, God will take care of us. We just have to endure, you know, just exist and let, you know, uh, let God do the work. Yeah. I think, you know, we're kind of the piggyback on that a little bit. We're in a time where we have so many resources to deal with a, a pandemic like this. You know, when you think like if we've got, if we're going to have to live through something is we have far more resources and know so much more about science and how um, things work that even in a time where there is so much that's unknown and new with this, we still have, you know, resources at our fingertips to help navigate it. And I think for me, when, and, and what I've heard so much of, you know, when you hear, when I hear people say like, oh, we need to put God back in our school systems. I'm like, you obviously don't have anything to do with the school system because God and faith is very prevalent in, in there. And it doesn't mean that, you know, because there's not some type of like public announcement about it, that, that that's not still what many uh, in the profession approach their jobs as a type of ministry. And when I, we hear often now people talk about, we're just going to have a lot of grace for one another. And I think that regardless of whether that's coming from someone's, um, mm -hmm. religious background and knowledge, or whether it's just something that they know that ability to offer grace to yourself and to others is of God. And it, it can't be separated from God. And, and that, that working with, students and families is an act of love. And for me, it's always going back to that, like, what's the most loving response I could do for this family that, it, you know, we're going into this time where people are stressed out and just in life in general. And now we're going to put a pandemic and all of these different uh, new restrictions and protocols onto to people and staff and families and students. And we have to approach that with this loving way of, you know, you need, I will offer grace for, for you. And because you're responding in stress and I'm not going to take it personally, but I want that same grace, you know, please offer that to me when, you know, nothing works on technology the first week of school. Um, so that's kind of been our language professionally even, um, but also personally, it's just that being able to to respond in a graceful, loving way to whatever obstacles are being presented um, has just been really helpful. And, and coming back to that for me is obviously, you know, a part of faith and has been a part of my journey of just like, what's, you know, if I really believe that, that God is love and the whole idea of the gospel is love, then what's the most loving thing for me to do in this situation? Yeah, that's great. Because I think any anytime there are challenges or or obstacles, there are obviously, you know, difficulties that come through that and frustrations and um, leads to worry and, and anxiety and all those things. But there are also opportunities. And, and as, as we've talked about already, things to be excited about and and hopeful aspects of that. And and I certainly think one of the opportunities available to us is to yeah, to be intentional about how we all approach this, whether it's from a parent standpoint or teacher or employee, student. And, and yeah, I like that idea that, that yeah, approaching this with, with grace and bringing, um, bringing a sense of peace and, and calm to, to our perspective and the way that we handle ourselves in all of these situations is, is kingdom work and, and is, is doing the work of, um, of being salt and light and of, of, of spreading the kingdom and, and being intentional about that is certainly an, an opportunity that, that we have in this moment. And, and so many of us are connected to the school system in some way, shape, or form, even if it's just you know some people at your church who, <laughs> who have kids or who are teachers. Um, I mean, none of us are completely disconnected 
from the school system, which I think is part of what makes this such a big conversation, but also, you know, so many people um, either have family members, even if you don't have kids who are in school anymore, you've got family members or friends or other church members who are, who are a part of it. And, and there's, there's work that we can all do to be supportive, to be encouraging, um, to pray, to, to keep those people in mind and situations in mind as we go through this year. Uh, Aiden, do you have anything to, to add on any of that from the perspective of a student? Uh, in regards to the Bible, I guess, right? In regards to, yeah, just faith or approaching the school year? I mean, yeah, it's kind of just about remembering, like, what's important, I guess, because, yeah, you're going to have all these issues um, that you face every day. Um, and, you know, everyone has their struggles, especially now when there's a pandemic going on. Um, but you kind of have to remember who's always there and what you're living for, I guess, you know, and that's God. So just keeping that in mind and always reminding yourself of that really helps you get through these times. That's good. Thank you. Uh, okay, we're going to get out with some quick stuff here at the end, and we're going to do a lightning round here at the end. But before we do that, one one more quick question for you, Emily. Um, I'm, I'm curious to know, are there things that might be unique to this school year that that we as individuals, parents, families, churches, small groups, whoever, could do to support and encourage schools and teachers? Yes, uh, I think so. One one thing is just people need to understand, and this is really important, most public doesn't understand this, that teachers and educators contracts are to the school district. So you're like, if you take a job as a third grade math teacher, that's just to, you know, your job is actually to the district. So we've had lots of teachers in our district who have been gone to work in the morning as a third grade math teacher. And then we're told, actually, we need you to be a self-contained virtual second grade teacher or, you know, so their whole job changed on a dime. And we've got um, people filling spots in places they didn't know that they were going to have to do. And so uh, just the, having the understanding when you uh, approach anyone in education that like their work is really hard. It is very, very, very hard um, emotionally and mentally and having to, to change things all of a sudden and just giving them the respect. I think that the job deserves Um, little things that people can do, you know, little notes of appreciation go a long way. Uh, Things that you put on social media about teachers and schools and educators, they really do go a long way. Um, And making a point to do that and be supportive. I think that um, continuing to ask like what, what educators in your community need at different times, you know, sometimes it's physical needs. Sometimes, you know, maybe they need a bunch of, of cheap, earbuds for their classroom, or maybe they need, you know, donations of hand sanitizer when you happen to come across it, you know, in a big, big pack, because all of that stuff can be difficult for us to find and get and maintain. Um, You know, and then as as silly as this might sound, like a little gift, like give them a $5 gift card to Sonic or Starbucks, like those little things, like make a teacher's day, like just what to us is really small, just to know that like, you know, I'm, I can't drop off coffee for you, but because, you know, I'm not allowed in the building anymore, but I can <laughs> send this, send this little gift card and have some coffee on me because I know that, you know, you're doing your best for my kiddo. Um, those little, those little bitty things, like they just really do make a difference because you feel seen when that happens, you know, you get yeah it just like any, any career, you know, when, when things go wrong, people are, you hear about it. And when things are going right, it can be really easy to forget that they're going right. And I think, you know, if there was ever a year to make an effort to really show your, your teachers and all the, I mean, all the way up to our superintendent, like good, I don't think our superintendent's probably slept till he, since yeah. he got the job yeah, exactly. you know, in March, like, like they're all exhausted and tired. Oh, what a time to any, start. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So just any little thing like that, that, that you could do, I know that's not totally unique, but I think the the need for it this year more than any other year is what makes it unique. So yeah. we're really going to need that support. That's good. Good stuff. Good ideas. 
All right, we're gonna close out with the lightning round. These are all gonna be just very short answers, so try not to think too much and just go off the cuff, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna ask you some questions because I thought it'd be fun to do some of this now and then maybe come back at the end of the school year and see how some of this went. So this is gonna be some kind of prediction type stuff, how you think the year is gonna go, and then some way, shape, or form, we'll come back. Maybe we'll do another podcast at the end of the year and kind of do a recap of, okay, this is how we thought the year was gonna go what actually happened. So, lightning round, y'all ready? And I fully realize you could say, I don't know to each and every one of these questions, but the point is that you have to think of some answer to give. So be definitive, (laughs) even if you don't feel definitive. (laughs) Got it? Okay. All right, so we'll just go around the circle on each one of these. Uh, Yes or no question. By the end of the school year, do you think all students will be attending school in person? No. No. I know for a fact UMHB will not. I already know that. So that, may, that may already be built in. To yes, that, we've already built that that's, in. That's built in? That's a no. Okay, we'll go to the next one then. Um, what will be the most difficult moment, season, or stretch of this school year for you personally? Okay. Uh, so it'll be, it'll either be October to Christmas or it'll be January to spring break. Jason, most difficult moment, season, or stretch? Right now. Right now. <laughs> right now. Yeah, Today. we're we're in the midst. Well, we're in the midst of uh, you know, the the heaviest amount of things that we have going on are going on right now. And like I said, we're we're trying to push through to Thanksgiving. And uh, I, I think that I actually think the spring might be better than the fall is going to be. And so we're I'm in right in the middle middle of it as we speak. How about you, Aiden? Most difficult part of the school year for you will be what? I'd say like the first and first couple of weeks, just as people get used to it and try to figure out how to study and figure things out uh, in a new way. Okay, very good. All right, another yes or no one. Will your campus get shut down at all this year because of a COVID outbreak? Yes or no, Emily? Ah. Oh, just got a yes or no it. No, no, no. Jason? No, I think if it were going to happen, it would have already happened by now. So I'm saying no. Aiden? Like, I'm like 100% sure we won't make it to like November. <laughs> <laughs> Just knowing how like nasty that is, that high school can get with all those like kids like like we don't like have you... soap in the bathroom sometimes. Like there's just no soap. So you have to like bring your own hand sanitizer. Like, and I just know like everyone at that school is nasty. <laughs> So Aiden's ready for a shutdown. All right, this one may be another one. This may be already be decided too. But uh, another yes or no one: Will there be a prom this year? Yes or no, Emily? Yes. Jason? Yes. I think they'll have to figure out something to do. Yeah. Aiden? A Zoom prom. There you go. What will you miss most this year about a typical school year? What will you miss the most about a typical school year? Emily? Can I be last? I need to think. I got to think it just a little bit. Um, Usually we would have a bunch of marching competitions. And now I don't, like, there hasn't been really, like, that much announced in the way of those i think we i know we have uil but it's not till december because they've pushed it back so far so just so many things like uh just missing like band competitions i gotcha jason uh i think just having a, an ease of flow like i said earlier it feels like we're white knuckling it i'm just I, i'm used to having just this okay we're in the flow of things and things are na- happening naturally mm-hmm. and i f- I, I don't have to worry that something catastrophic is going to happen. And they're, they're just not that I'm like losing sleep over it necessarily, but it always feels like there's this looming specter of catastrophe <laughs> that, that just is hanging over. Maybe that's just kind of the trauma of 2020 in general, but yeah, that's, yeah. That's really yeah. Awesome. yeah. And so I, I like, guess yeah. I miss having the, the innocent freedom of, 2019 i guess <laughs> when we're, we're longing for those carefree days of 2019 <laughs> <laughs> the greatness that was 2019 yes yeah. <laughs> okay <laughs> emily what what will you miss the most about a typical school year i think being able to be flexible with how you 
teach the kids and how you use the tools to teach the kids. I, I think, yeah, flexibility probably speaks to kind of what I was thinking about in, in less, I guess, maybe less of a looming catastrophe and just you don't feel like you have much flexibility this year. Everything has to be done a certain way. Yeah. And it feels very rigid and, that, I think, and impersonal, probably. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. All right. Last one. We'll get you out of here on this one. Uh, Jason, you get to start us on this one. What will you enjoy the most about the uniqueness of this school year? Honestly, I have, I, and I discovered this uh, when we got shut down in the spring, and I'm taking advantage of it still, but I'm enjoying working from home. I have a, a, a desk office set up, and I like being able to get up and, you know, take my shower whenever I want instead of first thing, and I like having my cup of coffee while I, you know, go through what I need to do first thing in the morning, and, um... Uh, that and that's not every day, but there are a few days where I'm able to do that, and that's nice. It's good. Aiden, what do you think you'll enjoy the most this year? Well, this year I have opted to have an off period for school, so I'll get to. I don't have to be. Usually, I would have to be at school at eight fifty for my first class, but now I don't have to be there until nine forty because I'm only taking six classes instead of seven. Um, so nice. That's a plus <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Every day that you go in, Every, in person? Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, was thinking, I mean, like on the Thursday and Friday. Yeah, it's, I don't know how it's worked like that, but every day, even like with the A and B scheduling, I'll have, uh, I won't have to be there until uh, 940. All right, that's nice. Yeah. All right, Emily, you get to close us out. What, what do you think you're going to enjoy the most about the uniqueness of this school year? Well, because we're being forced to like learn so much more about technology and how we can educate virtually. Um, that when it's said and done, we're going to have a lot more uh, resources and knowledge about ways we can, you know, do that. And so that opens up a lot of potential, you know, if, if kids are sick for an extended period of time or can't, you know, be at school, you have, maybe we'll have some more options that can continue. I also um, have enjoyed and are continuing to enjoy that because we are doing a lot more with Zoom and connecting with parents and families through uh, non face to face ways and in some ways we have been able to connect better with them that it can be really challenging to get you know parents up to school for a conference on a school day and have to miss work but now uh, we have some other options to to doing that and and seeing kids you know in different ways and seeing their family and their puppies and their baby sisters and all of that it really does help with building relationships and and growing your school community yeah. so I, I think that I'm going to continue to really enjoy that. Yeah, I mean, we, that was another thought that I'd had that maybe we'll, we'll, we'll revisit that at the end of the year is kind of what, what, what might thing, be things that people take forward. I think that's a question we're all asking in all different aspects. So, yeah, I'm sure there are those, those aspects for school as well. I did hear – I heard some people uh, asking sadly on Facebook <laughs> if this was the end of snow days. Like are those just going to be Zoom days now? So <laughs> Right. Right. Maybe we'll still get a snow yeah, day like, here hey. and there. What what are what are these snow days of which you speak? Yeah. Being here in Central Texas, that doesn't happen often. Yeah, no, not often, but yeah, every yeah, once in a while. Twice. That's what makes them so special, right? So if they're taken away. We've lived here for seven years. I think we've had one. It was more of an ice day than a snow day. I think that's happened once, maybe twice in the seven years that we've lived here. We actually, before we, when we moved... Uh, here from down on the coast in Portland, Texas, Isley's last day of school there was like a full blown snow day. Really? So on her last day that she was supposed to be there, they got snowed out. And it was like the first time in like a decade or something that they oh, wow. had it. So so she enjoyed that on on her last day of school. All right. Well, thank you all for for joining us. Uh, we've we've gone on long enough, and I appreciate your your thoughts and time spending with us, and uh, appreciate all your your contributions to, to the school year and all the work that uh, Emily, that you and Jason are putting in and you, Aiden, as you prepare as a student for the school year. And so may, may you all be, be blessed and, um, and have success as you get ready for the school year. Yeah, we usually close in prayer. Jason, you want to close us with, with prayer before we close out tonight? Sure, I'd be glad to. Our Heavenly Father, we pray your... Uh, your guiding hand on the teachers and administrators and students and uh, and aides and coaches and support staff 
uh, Lord, this is um, can be a little scary. And you've been guiding us through the last few months in challenging and, and, and unprecedented and unusual times. And Lord, we, we ask uh, that you place in our hearts a feeling of peace and comfort in knowing that you will continue to care for us. You will continue to look over us uh, in the days and months and years ahead. Um, I ask that you um, provide the students and teachers with patience and provide them with courage and provide them with wisdom uh, and provide them with safety, God. Um, allow this to be a rewarding experience, an experience where, um, where perhaps they are not yet able to anticipate how uh, they will be blessed in this time. Thank you for uh, continuing to take care of us, continuing to love us, and continuing to enrich our lives. And it's in your son's name we pray. Amen.